Hello everyone, my name is Tim and I'm working for a database tooling company called Prisma in Berlin. So my talk title is called End-to-End -End Type Safety. And so what are actually the ends that we are talking about here? We're talking about a full stack web application, traditional application going from database to front end. And we now somehow want to manage to get the data from the database into the front end and the other way around. So as you know, there are a million different stacks that you can have. And there is also a variety of numbers of uh, layers you can have in between. I will today show a very particular stack, which includes GraphQL and TypeScript. Uh, who of you has already used TypeScript? Oh, okay, pretty much nearly everyone, so that's good. Um, so the, what are the layers that we are talking about today? The first layer is the database. In our example, we're just using a SQLite database. Then we're accessing the data from our programming language. As you can imagine, uh, it's in a Node.js context uh, with an ORM called Photon.js. Uh, then we're based on that. We're creating a GraphQL uh, schema with a tool called Nexus, which is being exposed on a, on a, a HTTP endpoint. So we have a GraphQL server running and all of that will be consumed uh, in React in the front end. So when we talk about type safety, where do we get this type safety from? TypeScript. And I want to get this one out of the way directly in the beginning. You don't have to use TypeScript, but I still want to um, show you what kind of benefits you get in case you're using this tooling without TypeScript and just uh, JavaScript. So obviously the type safety you don't get in JavaScript meaning that if you now pass in a number but a string is expected, you don't really get that much help. Or if you have a property missing on an object, JavaScript cannot really help you with that. And therefore, if you're refactoring and you're, for example, renaming a field, mm, JavaScript is not really helping you with that and you have to uh, search replace by hand. On the other hand, it's obviously fair to mention that uh, TypeScript needs a build step. Uh, although I'm using TypeScript mostly with a um, command line tool called tsnode, so you can directly run the uh, TypeScript files uh, without a build step, there's thing, uh, still like an extra thing that you need to uh, take into account. The good news is that autocompletion also works for JavaScript. So um, if you're, for example, using VS Code, it informs you what kind of options you have when you're using uh, the tooling. So where do we start now with our full stack application? We're starting with the schema. When using Prisma, you have uh, one file where you define your schema, the structure of your data. And here concretely we have a user which is related to many, uh, one user has many posts. So we have a dedicated uh, schema definition language here in order to be able to define the requirements we have for our data. And how does it continue from here? From here, the schema flows up basically in the other layers. The Photon client will be generated based on that schema that has been defined. Then we have a tool called Nexus Prisma. I will later get into what that is. Uh, that generates a GraphQL schema, which now can be consumed by tools in the front end. For example, a tool called GraphQL Code Generator, which we are using in our React code to have type safety for our front end. So let's go into the first uh, layer, which is Photon. Um, let me give you a quick uh, overview of what Photon is and why it's interesting. So it's basically an ORM giving you access to your data. And what is interesting about Photon is that you have this select syntax here. You can say, I'm interested in the ID and the name. And depending on the shape of this object that you're passing in here, the return type is dynamic. So it uses some TypeScript magic under the hood. You can ask me after the talk if you're interested. But um, what is quite unique here, and there is no other ORM in any other language doing that, depending on the uh, input shape, you automatically have the result typed. So here we know the email is not a thing now. The next layer is Nexus. Nexus is a tool to implement GraphQL servers. So in GraphQL, you have a thing called a query in your schema. And in this case, we say uh, we have a query called hello. It's a string. And it has a nullable field called name as the uh, argument. 
and has this uh, function called resolve, which basically is backing this uh, query. Uh, and on the right side, you see the resulting GraphQL schema that we get by implementing such a, a GraphQL server. And last but not least, the front end. Here we see on the right hand side, we see our GraphQL uh, uh, query that we have here. We get the feed, in our case, these are posts and we're interested in the author. And what we have here now is a React component and especially this part here, feed query under the return line, uh, that is not a typo. That is actually how you provide generics in TypeScript for JSX. So query is a, a higher order component by the um, React Apollo package, which is a GraphQL client. And by providing feed query here as a generic, this data object that we now get in our callback there is typed. So depending on what we have in our, um, in our query here, we know that we have these kind of properties on our posts. But now let's actually battle test this stack and let's actually look into it how it looks like in, in um, reality and how you can measure uh, how easy such a stack is to use is by adding a field and basically seeing how many places do we have to touch. About a year ago, Kitze, who's quite famous in the JavaScript ecosystem, uh, was tweeting that, oh no, I have to touch now 37 uh, places. And a year later now, I believe that the number of places is significantly reduced. Uh, it's not yet at one or zero, I mean at least one, but we're at least uh, much better off. So the places in our layer uh, system, what, where, where do we have to touch something? What has to change? Um, the first thing that has to change, obviously, in our database, we need a new column. Then in our M or M, uh, photon in our case, that thing somehow needs to be aware that a field has been introduced. Um, in our application, our model or entity obviously also needs to include this. The resulting GraphQL schema needs to be updated. And therefore, in the front end, we can then use this. Obviously, in the front end, we now want to use this field. Otherwise, introducing that uh, is uh, useless. When using the Prisma stack, you save a bunch of steps here. What you only have to do for the first two layers is adding it in the schema. And the tooling helps you to automatically add it to the database and that the ORM is updated automatically. Um, the, in the application server, you just add it once in Nexus or Nexus Prisma. I will later show that. And it will be uh, updating the GraphQL schema. And then later, obviously, you still need to use it in the front end um, in your components. But talk is cheap. So let's actually look into a demo. We have a pretty simple block application here. We have a feed. We're uh, differentiating between a draft and a, um, let's say, production blog post. And what we want to do now is introduce a field. So here we have our schema defined. And we would like to um, introduce a field to the post model. Let's say we introduce kind and we call it post kind. And it could be an enum. And this enum maybe has something called, it could be a long read, it could be um, a comment, and it could be news. Yeah? And I will quickly make the site here a bit bigger. So, um, where? Or? You put some new lines at the bottom, I think, in it, so you see the post. Ah, yeah, there. okay, mm, here. And um, so now we have a command running here at the bottom, uh, which is called Prisma Dev. This command watches the schema file, and as soon as it sees change, it will migrate our local development database and will generate a new Photon client. Here we have with this, in this window with the star and the rocket, we have our um, Node.js server running, and uh, that will also reload as soon as we save. So now let's save the schema. And as we see, this is now regenerating the Photon client. And we now can actually use this new kind uh, field in our application. So our application, here we have our uh, type defined called post. And now we decide, OK, we want to now expose this uh, field to the outer world. So we just tell it dot kind, and we can save this. Before we do so, 
a quick overview. What is the schema that we're exposing right now? This is a tool called GraphQL Playground showing you the GraphQL schema you're exposing. And as we see, the post type doesn't yet have a kind. So we can reload here. That's the latest state we have. As soon as we save the schema, we can now reload our playground and we will see we have a new kind. That's nice. However, in our code, we still see that there is a compile error and TypeScript tells us kind is missing. So that's very nice. Thank you, TypeScript. And we can now check out, okay, here some auto completion. We can add the kind. So this is a mutation where we're creating a post and the auto completion also shows us we can, for example, call it long read because Photon has already been updated and Photon is basically the tool that we are using here to implement a GraphQL resolver. So if we save this, um, now the compiler is happy and uh, our API is ready. The next step is to actually use this in the front end. In the front end, we have a tool running called a GraphQL Code Generator. And what it does, it basically looks into your uh, GraphQL queries that you're defining here in your code and it uh, matches them to the schema that is exposed by the server. And if we, for example, would now call this field here publish to, it would say no. This is not a thing. Um, yeah, now the screen is a bit, a bit small, but in general it will just show you, hey, there's a problem. Uh, so now we can introduce a, a field called kind here. It will reload. It's happy. And um, okay, perfect. The feed page has it. So now we can introduce it to our post component. Um, the post component here uh, with, with TypeScript defines its uh, requirements. It wants a post with a kind. We can import the post kind based on the generated code, which comes from the um, GraphQL uh, uh, code gen tool. And now we can use the kind here and save this. Oh, there we get an error. What is going on? Hmm, TypeScript now tells us there's another place where we're using the post component and that's called the drafts page. So due to the type safety, it now lets us know Please also add the kind, if you want to use it in the post component, please also add it in the drafts page. So we save this and theoretically, yes, and now it's updated. Perfect. So, and now let's look into the front end. Are we actually using the kind? Um, we don't see it yet. Yes. So we now see the default kind is long read because that is also the kind we changed to in the uh, code. Okay, so what did we just see? We saw that it's nice to have a single source of truth of the schema because we automatically can update all the rest of our application. We have auto-completion in our, uh, uh, while querying the data and we didn't have to touch all layers, just three layers, a bit better. So how does the future look like? What I just showed you is not yet production ready. However, we highly encourage you to use it. And um, if you have any questions, ideas, want to join the discussion, you can go to the GitHub page of uh, Prisma slash Prisma2. Thanks.